us now from Washington, Washington Post media columnist Margaret Sullivan. Her latest piece goes behind the scenes of the unprecedented decision by the Committee to Protect Journalists to publicly denounce a political candidate. And she writes in part this. For decades, Sandra Mims Rowe was a rigorous newspaper editor who demanded deep reporting from the journalists she led. So it's not surprising that Rowe would, would, would do the same when an idea surfaced at the Committee to Protect Journalists, where she has been board chairwoman for five years. The idea? CPJ would make a strong statement against Donald Trump on the First Amendment grounds, the kind of thing the organization had never done before. CPJ's global mission is to try and keep journalists from being jailed or killed, but it hasn't been involved before in politics. What was the evidence that Trump was a threat to press freedom, she wanted to know? The evidence delivered in a staff memo was overwhelming. It made the case that Trump not only despises journalists, but also that he has no understanding or respect for the role that they play in our democracy. Good to have you on our show. Um, give us, I guess, a little bit more about Trump's relationship with the media and why it was so important to make such a strong and unusual statement on the part of CPJ. Hi, Mika. Hi, Joe. Hi. It's been um, a very paradoxical relationship, I think, because, you know, the media gave him a great deal of uh, essentially free advertising early on, and now things have gotten, they've gotten much tougher, and as a result, he's pushing back very, very hard. I think CPJ, the journalism rights organization, felt so strongly that they had to make a statement because they try to keep journalists safe around the world. And if press rights are threatened in America, that really has implications globally. Do you, and uh, he threatens the safety of journalists? Well, it, it, you know, certainly journalists are having a tough time at his rallies. I don't think that he uh, specifically threatens journalists' safety, but he's definitely threatening press rights. He's talked many times about wanting to go up against or to change the libel laws and to change the laws that allow journalists to do their jobs. So that's, that's very threatening. Margaret, it's Donnie. You talk about the paradox of vis-a-vis uh, -vis Trump and the media as far as the beginning of the election. The ultimate paradox is Trump's entire life, how he has used, exploited, actually brilliantly, the media to create who he is, his brand. I want to go back to something you touched on, because I don't know if people truly understand what's going on at these rallies, how basically the press is in one area and they are booed and heckled, and Trump actually uses that as a tool in these rallies, and it's frightening when you see it. Yeah, they're really, it's, it's become a very ugly situation and a very scary one, I think. Um, and, you know, for me, I guess I'm such a true believer. I, I, I think that journalists have such an important role in our society. It's very, very hard to see this happening. And I'm glad that CPJ has, has made such a strong statement. And Margaret, when you talk about CPJ protecting journalists from being killed, of course, I think of Russia and the number of journalists mm. there who either died mysteriously or disappeared or, or, or were killed. Um, looking back here at home, though, with Trump and some of the rhetoric he's used, what is more frightening to you? What Donald Trump has said or the fact that so many millions of his supporters believe him and agree with him with regards to the media? Yeah, he's really riled people up and made people mistrust the media in a way that is is really troubling to me because again, I I know how important our work is and you know, now there's this sort of feeling that we're evil, we're part of this rigged conspiracy and uh it's going to be very hard to go up against that. I think that we need to start sort of uh telling our story a little bit better. All right, The Washington Post, Margaret Sullivan, thank you so much for being with us. We greatly appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.